What's up, everyone? In the last episode, we got Shiraba. Oh, I should say welcome back to Bayonetta first. Uh, yeah, in the last episode, we got Shiraba. <laughs> and in this episode, we're uh, going to put it to good use. And Shiraba's one of my favorite weapons in the whole game, up there with uh, Colonel Kilgore. Or was it Captain Kilgore? No, it's Colonel. I know Apocalypse now. <laughs> Anyway, it's got an, off an awesome moveset, it's fast, it's moderately strong, uh, it has really good Wicked Weave attacks, and its charge modifier is not only extremely cool, but it's going to be what I use to get through this Alpine challenge we're head toward. heading towards. Jeez. Speaking not good today. No words. Brr, brr, brr. Anyway, it also has uh, a pretty cool secret attack that you do by holding down the lock, the lock on button. And I'll try to remember to show that off a little bit later. Uh... Sorry about that. I heard my smoke alarm going off for some reason. Luckily, we are not on fire, so we're good to go for this Alpine challenge. Um, what was it? What was I going to say? Oh, uh, Shiraba literally translates to the scene of bloodshed, according to the Bayonetta wiki. And, there was also a little fun fact from uh, Hideki Kamiya's developer commentary. There was supposed to be um, an extra animation, like a special one for the weapon where the hilt was going to open up. And it was going to reveal the heart of the demon Asura. Who is... I'm not super familiar with Japanese mythology, but he's like some kind of demon god. Also... Shameless plug for uh, me and Mike's Let's Play of Osiris Wrath. Go watch that after this. Yay. But uh, that animation never made it into the game. The code is still there, though. And I just failed that challenge. Think I have it this time, though. That definitely seems pretty doable. Oh, also, uh, while I'm talking about Sharaba, there's a similar sword in the game that looks like a lightsaber or maybe Zero's beam saber called Pillow Talk, which you get as a reward for beating the game on uh, Infinite Climax mode. Or you can unlock it at some point for, I think it's 500,000 Halos, but I can't remember where to unlock it. So we're probably not going to see that in this playthrough. So he's at half health, still have all of my kicks left, and two more sword hits. This is going really well. Oh! God, the fucking jinx. Am I gonna have enough time? I might have enough time to do this still. Yes, 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 yes. No, god damn it! I, uh, that was really stupid of me. Okay, I it should definitely have it this time. <laughs> Pretty much the only thing that happened last time was I had like a second and a half left on the clock and I didn't hit a button. I think I was I I had some kind of brain fart and I was waiting for him to do another swing so I could activate which time. I was I just wasn't thinking. That sucks. Let's see. Eleven seconds, he has no health left, and I still have this one hit. So, should be good. I think I can actually do what I was planning on doing last time now, and just do it a little cleanly. On second thought, though, that is not even a smart thing to be doing. It, all three of my health bubbles left, I could have just risked it. Yeah, I deserve that bronze for uh, that decision. That was a little bit too close for comfort still, but a win is a win is a win. Now, we can actually get on with this level, now that we have all these Alfheim challenges out of the way. Pretty sure that's the last one for this level. Yeah, I think Chapter 1 had one Alfheim, and Chapter 2 and maybe 3 both have 3 each. Th chapter 3 might have 4. So now we're gonna run back to the area we were in before, where the Gates of Hell were... Was? Hmm. Anyway, where was that? I think this way here on the left should be where the the Alfheim challenge was. 
Okay, I know where I'm going. Yeah, and that's where the train collided with the opposite side of the Alfheim room. Man, my thought process gets really weird to verbalize sometimes. <laughs> It's pretty much just a monkey banging some symbols together. Alright, so I have a broken witch statue here. Alright, oh, I remember this part. Before I go down here, though, I think there is a fight. Yes, there is. And there's also some, some uh, collectibles to collect in this area. Yeesh, that hurt. Let's get uh, some sweet Sharaba flavored revenge. You know, Sharaba flavor probably not very good if that does literally translate to the scene of bloodshed. Probably tastes very salty and metallic. Not that I'm a vampire or anything. I don't know what fucking blood tastes like. Bronze, silver, gold. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wait, was that platinum? The middle one, I mean, not obviously not the end result. Here, there's a broken moon pearl. I think that gives us another moon pearl? Let's see. No, it doesn't. And up in this tree is a broken witch heart. I don't know who goes around sticking hearts in trees. Some kind of serial killer. Now we'll do the same thing we did for the other puzzles just like this. Dodge and beat up a bridge. Coming up in just a second, we're going to meet another character important to the plot. My scurrying little friend. Just a child? What are you doing running around Vigrid? You're certainly not dressed in your Sunday best. So, Fortitudo is once again back, and there was a lot going on in that cutscene. So, first of all, uh, the woman in white, which I think is either uh, Bayonetta or supposed to be maybe the uh, the Umbra leader, or the Umbra elder, I mean, uh, is singing Fly Me to the Moon, which is, again, the main theme of Bayonetta. So, Cereza's voice actor, when she sent her audition tape in, uh, Kamiya was initially a little hesitant because it sounded like she was missing teeth. Which, it turned out, she is actually missing her front two teeth. 
And, oh god, I really love these, uh, these moving stages. We saw it a little bit before with the, uh, the Beloved who knocks the bridge around, picks the bridge up, and swings you around while you're fighting on it. Oh, also, um, there's a little cutscene that plays at the end of this fight, and you can see, uh, a Colosseum in the distance. And pay attention to that Colosseum, because it's a cool little shout-out to something we're gonna be doing later. Wait, I died? How the hell did that- Thank God it worked this time. I've died here so many times for no reason at all. Like, I'm hitting square as soon as it comes up, so I don't know what the hell is go what the hell was going on. Oh, I got a fucking oh, a stone day. award, because that damn QTE. Also, if you've noticed, uh, Cereza and Luca are both introduced in this chapter, but the tro and the trophies you get at the end of each level, the bronze, the silver, etc., they're all modeled after characters. Uh, Luca is the silver trophy, and I and Platinum wanted to avoid spoiling anything. So the trophies are just generic witch statues until you meet the characters in game, and then they uh, later on you actually see the characters that the trophies are supposed to be modeled after. Ladies and gentlemen, it's what you've been waiting for. Angel so attack! I learned something cool about uh, Angel Attack. Hideki Kamiya has a younger brother who's really into shooters, especially uh, ones like Call of Duty. So when Bayonetta was uh, completed, he was excited to show his brother the Angel Attack minigame, thinking his brother would uh, be really into it because of his affinity for shooters. And when he showed it to his brother, his brother's response was pretty much, was, is this supposed to be some sort of joke? Which is kind of a cruel cool thing to, to say to your brother after he's finished such a huge project, but... Uh, he kind of has a point. It's not as far as far as uh, shooting mechanics go. It's not amazing, but it's not supposed to be a big focus of the game. Defending angel attack for no reason. Uh, poor Kamiya. Round over. Alright, so the episode's only going to end up being, what, like 10 to 15 minutes with the things that I'm going to cut? So, let's just start Chapter 3 and watch the opening cutscene. If I was your child, I'd be an awfully ugly witch, wouldn't I? Yours is a face only a mother could love, and one I could never forget. If only I could remember where from. No quarrel? You're in no position to decide that. 
See, my infernal partners love my ability to eliminate your kind. I figure your sacrifice would shut them up for a while. Man, I love Fortitudo. Reminds me of uh he reminds me of John Carpenter's the thing with uh the upside down the upside down face. And he was initially designed with uh, his head right side up, but Platinum thought it looked more disturbing when it flipped and Yeah, I can definitely see that. It's got that vague hint of almost human, but not quite. Also the deal with these enemies is whenever you hit them with a normal attack they just it just bounces off them and you take damage you have to use things like uh torture attacks uh wicked weaves will hit them the car hit them pretty well and you can hit them with normal attacks if you're in witch time but even then, I'm still just going to charge Shiraba up, because that is way too fun not to overuse. Also, the whole stage is filled with hot lava. The floor is hot lava. At least sometimes. Some places. Okay, you get in the Iron Maiden. I get my, I mean, I guess, gold. I think I took a, I think I, most of the damage I took there was just from me hitting enemies with normal attacks. Yeah! Wait. Oh, wow. That's a really, oh, right. I get shit for combo score when I abuse Sharaba the way I do. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, that's gonna do it for this episode, folks. Uh, I'm gonna get my bearings here, and we will pick up where we left off in the next episode. Take it easy. Have a good one.